All right, hello everyone. This is Barry Vanover and welcome to Ask Barry V Show. Me and Mr. Baker are here to take your questions that you've given us last week. We want to let you know also that this is a special edition of Ask Barry V because we have Master Ken from Ameridote will be at the end of this episode continuing his discussion with us uh, where we ask him some business questions about uh, his Ameridote school and he is sharing some office self-defense with us as well. So stay tuned for that at the end of the show. This show is brought to you by Century Martial Arts. Century Martial Arts makes all the, the martial arts gear and produces and, and distributes all the gear for all the premier martial arts studios, so many other organizations, and they, they always do a great job for our products at Premier Martial Arts. I just don't think another merchandising company could handle our account. No, uh, we have so many students, so many products, so many different sizes, so many SKUs. And they're just the top of the line when it comes to uh, this. And I would encourage, you know, they do third-party uh, uh, logoing. So anybody that wants to brand their own logo on all their materials, you got to look at Century as, a, as an alternative for this. All right, Mr. Baker, let's go ahead with the first question. Sure. Uh, this week, we're actually starting with a question from a gentleman who had a question last week. And I'll just refresh your memory here. Last week, Bill W. had asked about... Uh, the best location, how to find the best location, what you think the best location is. Now, this week, he's actually asking, how do you know as an owner when you're ready to open a second location? Okay. All right. So this guy sounds like he is in uh, decision-making mm -hmm. mode. Yeah, I think so. Okay, for his next location. You know, one of the biggest mistakes that successful owners make is opening their second school too quickly. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is that second school doesn't get kicked off. It doesn't go as well as the first one. And it draws so much time, energy, and money away from their primary location that it really becomes a detriment and, and can, can make both schools into failing martial arts studios. I've seen this happen several times. Uh, your second school is the hardest one. Because once you get two schools down and you've got two schools running smoothly, you've kind of figured out the multi-school kind of operations. Systems in place. Yeah. you got systems in place. So cookie cuttering it after that into schools three and four isn't quite as bad. But man, that second school is 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 very difficult sometimes. First, you got to think about the reasons why you would want to open up your second location. You know, first reason is to provide opportunity for up and coming staff sure. members. You know, if you guys have CIT programs or you've got lots of black belts running around your school, you're going to have instructors there at your school or black belts that are interested in opening their own school. So to me, the number one reason is to provide opportunity for them, gives them opportunity, gives you opportunity, and keeps from creating some of your own competition exactly in the future. Exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, for no other reason to limit competition, yeah. for sure. Scaling is important, and what I mean by scaling is, you know, I can market if I can market three martial arts schools in the same area. Here in Knoxville, we have six studios now, and we can market all six martial arts studios almost for the same price that a school can market mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. martial arts school. So we can scale our advertising to a huge benefit. Also, we start buying more merchandising from our, our, our different supply companies so we can make better deals because we're <coughs> buying more uniforms. Therefore, we can get special pricing mm -hmm. on different uniforms and different supplies. So that whole scaling is important. And then third reason why you would want to open up, or yeah, the next reason why is, is dominating your geographic market, being the martial arts school in mm -hmm. town. Six martial arts schools, three martial arts schools in a three-mile triangle starts to close in on people, starts to keep people from wanting to open up martial mm -hmm. arts schools. We did this in our North Shore location. Mm -hmm. We opened up a martial arts school a couple years ago, actually a year and a half ago now, for only reason is that we knew that neighborhood was up and coming, we had the staff member, and we wanted to make sure nobody else opened right. up a school in that yeah. market. We weren't dying to open up a school yeah. all of a sudden, but we knew to, to squeeze our demographics and to squeeze our market, we needed to dominate that area and go ahead and get that location. So I think mm -hmm. that's that's a, a reason. And then finally, you know, a reason to open up your another location is passively a active passive income. Now, passive income is when you create a stream of income where you don't do anything really. It just sits there and works for you. Actively passive income means you are going to work. You're going to have to do sure, some things, yeah. right? But somebody else is going to do it for you. So, you know, I think the reason, the main thing about knowing when it's time to open up a martial arts school, your next location, is when can you open up a martial arts studio that doesn't take anything at all away 
from any of your existing locations. The owner himself isn't leaving this school and opening up. The owner's not taking a key staff member from this school and moving him to open up. They found completely different instructors, trained them independently, and sending them out to open up the next location. You know, martial arts schools, all martial arts schools, regardless of what anybody says, to some extent are personality driven. You may have the best systems in the world, but the people running those systems, the instructors running those systems, have built a bond with their students. And you don't want to disrupt that bond whatsoever, as little as you have to. Now, it's always better to be systems driven, right? So that things operate, no matter who's there, things are going to operate reasonably the same. So I would say when you can open up a, a pretty much a systems driven school without taking anything away from your existing location, and you have the, those key staff members, that's what it comes down to is the, the staff members ready in place. Now you're getting close to when you're ready to open up your, your next location. Nice. Um, our next question for this week is uh, from Paul L. And he asks, uh, I keep hearing you guys talk about upgrades. What does this mean exactly? You know, upgrade systems have been around the martial arts at least 10 years, I would say by now, 10 or 12 years. And upgrade systems just means this. You are taking your martial arts curriculum and you're breaking it down into different programs, different products to sell to your existing students. See, martial arts school A, they have no upgrade systems. Students sign up. They come in and the owner teaches classes, hopes he has good enough retention to keep those students as long as possible to get a black belt. Okay, and they keep paying that monthly tuition, usually the same monthly tuition. A school that has upgrade programs has taken the curriculum and they've designed different programs that the students move through on their journey to black belt. They have a basic program that's maybe six or 12 months. That program has a certain color uniform. It has a, it has a, a certain curriculum. It has a certain energy and feel. It has its own class maybe. That program has a beginning and has an end and has a total cost. Well, then the next program might be your black belt training program. That program has a different uniform, a different set of equipment that supports a different curriculum or added on to curriculum that a student has to move up to before they can get their black belt. And then you add another program in Premier Martial Arts. Our next one's called Premier Training. It has different benefits, different uniforms, different weapons, different curriculum, and then a leadership program and a CIT program. Because really what you're doing is creating different programs and products to sell to your existing students over a period of time. You're not just giving them everything in that one membership price that they signed up on uh, when they first came into the school. Sure, yeah. So like I said, it gives you a whole new demographic to sell to, which is your existing students. Right, so you, so you got new them. students. Now each month, yeah. look, you've got new students coming in the door to sell to and make mm -hmm. money, and you've got all your existing students in the school that you can upgrade to higher levels of training, yeah. and you've got a whole avenue of new new people that you can sell to, new customers, which are your, are your existing students. And talk about retention. You know, uh, people are excited about what you're doing in the school, but they want more. They, they may love martial arts, but they want a different experience in A different martial level arts. of training, exactly. a different experience. Yeah. They want to be separated from the rest of the students and seen on a higher level. Absolutely. You know, that's just Americans in general. Why would, you know, a Toyota and a Lexus is right. made by the same people, yeah. pretty much the same car, yeah. but it's that yeah. little bit of a symbol, the little bit of bells and whistles sure. that's extra on that car. Apples that makes, recognize that, right? Right. Yeah, they did to, really to well. To make people want to pay that extra, Yeah. right? I mean, the minute, I, the new iPhone, is exactly the same look as the last version, the six, right? But even I'm like, oh man, can they? The minute that someone can tell visually that one phone is newer than the other one, everybody wants to go get the new phone because they feel like, oh man, I've got the and that's I've got the point. old stuff and I'm going to hide that's it. That's a right? big point there on the upgrade programs. You have to visually have differences. You have to have points of difference. Like you always say, people aren't going to pay more money or commit to a longer period of time for something that they perceive. As the same experience, as the same, thing. Or same value. It, yeah, so. exactly. And then you know, when you're talking about a school that is doing twenty thousand a month gross revenue, and a school that's doing forty, fifty, sixty thousand, it's usually the school that has the upgrade systems in place yeah. that easily double their income. When we take on a new client, we know when we look and see about their upgrading, we know immediately about how much money we can make them because we can really up. That, at that gr monthly gross revenue by implementing and instilling good upgrade systems. Yeah, that's a pretty easy client when they come and you see there's really no upgrade systems right. in place. That's a, a quick way to fix it. And we can always tell 
a school, mm -hmm. if they do have upgrade systems in place and we're implementing their new, their upgrade systems rather, you can always tell how good their classroom floor is. If their classroom floor is tight, strong, good curriculum, good instructors, mm -hmm. getting putting the upgrade systems in place mm -hmm. at that school is simple and easy. Yeah. People are lining up to upgrade. But if that classroom floor isn't right, People aren't going to want to pay doesn't and buy matter. the, the uniform, same old thing. Doesn't matter what mm -hmm. weapons if no. they're not excited about what's going on. Absolutely. Uh, our next question for this week, uh, Aiden asks, uh, our school wants to start doing uh, karate themed birthday parties. How do we get started? Okay. Good question. All right. That is a great question. Um, Aiden, very first thing I would do if you're getting ready to kick off your martial arts birthday parties or karate birthday parties, run a special with your existing students. We do this once a year anyway. Like we'll put up a big poster in the school and it'll say birthday party, karate birthday party special, 50% off any party booked in the month of March. You may give 50% off a, a martial arts birthday party if they book it any time in the next 12 months during that one month, let's say, for example, March. Uh, you may give anybody that books a birthday party in the month of March a free birthday party. You know, whatever your special is. Now, as we're filming this, of course, we're we're in October. So maybe you're doing this for November or December or or or, or January. Once everybody spent their money on on their Christmas and holiday, maybe in January you start running this special. Because I would ask them to put a deposit down of twenty five dollars or something just to hold the space, and then they get half off the birthday party. Uh, and they can book it any time for the next 12 months. That right there alone is going to schedule you a bunch of uh, karate birthday parties. Karate birthday parties are super popular. Matter of fact, we know this from our surveys that we've been doing with martial arts school owners. Martial arts school owners that are making above $50,000 or more, their number one method of, of offline marketing is martial arts birthday parties. It, you should be taking it that serious. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, some other ideas for kicking off your birthday parties is every new student that you sign up, Go ahead and give them their first birthday party free. Why not? You know, we work so hard to get into the public school systems to go in and do school talks to see 25 kids. We've got birthday parties where parents are paying us to bring in 15 or 20 of their child's closest friends to a martial arts birthday party to allow us to show them the benefits of martial arts and sign them up. So even if you have to do that party for free sometimes, it's, Worth it's it. yeah. yeah. How much money would it cost you if you had to spend the money to get 15 or right. 20 kids to show up at your school to, to, to learn about what you do? Mm -hmm. So every time somebody signs up at a premier martial arts school, they're given a fr their first birthday party free. Now, we don't use that as a, as a sales tool to try to sign them up, but... I know some of the advanced program directors are. If they feel like somebody's teetering on the on basic the fence, program, yeah. they go like, oh, by the way, Premier Martial Arts is running a special this month. Any new student that signs up gets a free birthday party. That's worth $349 right there. So now whether it's a year program or six months, that's a pretty good savings yeah. on top of that as well. So we're not saying use that for your sales procedures, but when you have to, it's a good Why idea. Not, right? I think. Sure. So uh, <laughs> let's see what else. Of course, on your website. Your martial arts studio website should have an area that's advertising your martial arts birthday parties. Now, we've taken it a step further in Premiere. We have our own separate karate birthday party or martial arts birthday party websites or landing page, if you will, that we SEO for all the terms that are not have anything to do with martial arts, right? For when mom is searching for birthday party ideas in New York, uh, you know, and all those different phrases where she's researching, trying to find an idea for her kid's birthday. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have anything to do with karate or martial arts in the SEO. And we run a Google AdWords campaign that when that phrase goes in there, the, our Google AdWords pops up. So it's definitely worth spending some money on Google ads to get your birthday party SEO up at the top. Yeah. If you have young kids, you go to so many birthday parties. Every, everybody's looking for something alternative, How many something times, unique. How right. many times have, have as parents and kids had to go to Chuck E. Cheese? They want something unique. They want their child's birthday to be something different. So I, I agree 100% there. I, of course, some other things we've done in the past is we've done um, always at our promotional booths. We've had free birthday parties uh, when we network with PTA. Sometimes schools want us to donate money, but sometimes we can get around that by donating things like birthday parties to right. raffle off, right? Um, we don't really do much lead boxes so much anymore, but... We do do lead boxes at party stores because there's people in there shopping for their kid's birthday party and, and what kind of decorations or what theme they're going to do. So that would be a place to do them. Absolutely. So, and then another one is, of course, 
we always joke around about how much we can't stand Groupon and daily deal sites, but there is an exception. We do we do use them for birthday parties because yeah. again. They promote it, uh, the mother's promoting it. They do all the work for you to get those 15, 20, 30 kids, who knows how many kids you could get there. Um, and when you're doing a couple of those a weekend, that's some serious leads. I mean, if you did two birthday parties a weekend, let's say it's average 15 kids, that's 30 prospects that were on your mat that weekend. If you did that right. four times a month, right, that adds up to 120 prospects that came through your school. Again, that would take a lot of money to get 120 kids to take a martial arts lesson in your school. <laughs> Absolutely. And yeah. birthday parties, not only are they a huge source of leads mm -hmm. for new students, but they're a good income generator for your school. $349 parties, right? And the good income generator for your instructors that are teaching and instructing those parties. Yeah. So, Aiden, uh, that gave you enough uh, tips right there to kick off your the, the marketing promotions of your guys' new karate birthday parties for sure. All right, that's the three we had for this week. Okay. All right, so guys, uh, marketing tip of the week. And uh, the the uh, uh, also, we're going to make you a special offer. Marketing tip of the week is brought to you by martialartsmarketing.com. And it's your business card. You should have business cards for every staff member of your martial arts studio. because And train them to when they're out in the public, when they go to restaurants when they're out in the public and they meet moms and dads and kids to be able to reach in their pocket, pop out their business card. And on the back of the business card is a VIP pass. That VIP pass allows your staff members to give anybody a free VIP membership special. You don't, you don't have to say what that special is because that special may change. One month you're doing, let's do a free month. Two private lessons, a uniform, and a free month. The next time it's just two private lessons and, you, and a free uniform is the VIP special. You don't have to write it what it is, right? And then encourage them to, to practice leaving that around town wherever they're at, handing that simple business card out to people. It's something they can keep on their person and it can have a huge impact on your person-to-person -person and, and business-to-business, door-to-door type uh, marketing. Now, martial arts marketing is allowing us to give a special off. The next week, the next seven days... Anybody that orders business cards at martialartsmarketing.com, they're going to give you 50% off. They're going to design the cards for you, and they're going to give you 50% off the purchase just because you see it on this show. You'll not see this offer anywhere else. And the coupon code for that is that you'll put in is biz, B-I-Z, 50, 5 zero, off, O-F-F. -F. So biz, 50, off, B-I-Z, 5 zero, O-F-F, -F. Put that coupon code in. It's going to give you 50% off of any business cards that you order. And you should have them for all your staff members. And with this price, 50% off. They're so cheap. Yeah, yeah it's should, so yeah. ridiculously yeah. cheap. Or uh, I think they're basically giving you that at cost so you can go on and see their other products yeah. that they have, yeah. right? But you can get every staff member in your school, the front desk girl, yeah. all your instructors. And you forget right? how important that is to some staff members. And they, The it's first a, time they get the business card with it, the right? logo and their title. I mean, right. so absolutely. Yeah, it benefits. shows importance yeah. for them. Yeah. They're proud to pass of that course, out. Yeah. So that is our marketing tip of the week. And that is also our special uh, coupon code for martialartsmarketing.com, 50% off business cards. All right. So now we're going on to uh, stay tuned for the next part two of the Master Ken interview. Thanks, guys. The following are not the views and opinions of Barry Vanover, Martial Arts Management Group, or Premier Martial Arts. The following is for entertainment purposes only and is funny as hell. If you are easily offended, insulted, or just a crybaby, please stop viewing now. Well, I've got some questions. That people okay. have knew you were going to be on, and, and a few people have asked some business questions this time. Okay. Instead of about martial arts. So this is the Ask the Asbury show portion of the Asbury show. Ask Barry Ask V. Bar Ask show. Barry V. Yes. All right. John K. Ask, what is your stance on instructors dating their adult students, hopefully adult students, or maybe the parents hopefully. of the students? There's not a solid rule against that? <laughs> there is a solid rule against Just it. Just said hopefully. Right, but he did not clarify whether or not. Okay. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that John Kentucky. K. is asking <laughs> about, about adult students. Right. I'm, well, I'm going to say, uh, yeah, I'm going to say that if you're going to date uh, students, um, not to do it in the dojo. I think it's distracting. I think if you're going to be holding class, you can't be having people on a date okay. in, in the class. It's not what I meant. 
I mean, just dating in general. Oh, just in general. Yeah. yeah. What if the relationship goes bad and you he's dating someone and you lose a student? I mean, wouldn't you be upset? Yeah, that's why we actually have a policy. It's in the uh, the liability waiver and the form that they sign when they come to the dojo that if they cause someone to quit, they are then responsible for that student's monthly dues for at least a year. I'm so it's three hundred dollars a month now. Yeah, he's gotten rid okay. of three three of my female students right. so far. So at least you have a plan for this. Yeah, I don't lose money. Yeah. Yeah, it only damages our reputation. Okay. There's no such thing as bad reputation in America. Right. Yep. Todd has Asperger's in case you're wondering. <laughs> Another thing you need to do in marketing is uh, reach out to the youths. You have to reach out to the youths, kids, so that they, uh, you can adapt self-defense to what they do. And I hear that kids nowadays are always carrying their phones. So you gotta teach them how to defend themselves with a, with a phone, okay? Let's say I'm a teenager just texting my friends and then someone comes up. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna take the receiver out, okay? He throws a punch, I'm gonna block that, okay? Strike him here, okay? Strike him to the groin, okay? I'm gonna wrap it around here. I can choke him, okay? Wrap him on the head with this, here. I can uh, just go ahead and finish the choke here. I can use leverage here. Go ahead and bring him, bring him out. Bring him down, good. And then when you're done, you can take a selfie. Hashtag Ameridote. <laughs>